all right, all right, all right. Welcome back, everyone, to UKSG Spring 2021. This next run is going to be... Take it away. Hello, I am Iora. This is going to be LTS, which is a category where we do as little skips as possible, and it's a lot of fun. So we're just going to, well, I'm here with a co-commentator, if he wants to introduce himself as well. Hello, I'm Critical Sid, I've been stuck in this game since 2013. <laughs> <laughs> now here I am commentating it. <laughs> so if everything's all good to go, we're good to start in 3, 2, 1, and go! We're up. You can count on me. So starting off the bat... Team Rose is pretty interesting because they are the only ones with a tutorial level, which is also the bane of existence for most speedrunners because it's a lot of mashing the A button. And I mean a lot of it. So A lot of it. <laughs> yeah. If you're sensitive <laughs> to the sound of GameCube controller mashing, you might not like this. Dude, I love GameCube controller sound. <laughs> <laughs> but right off the bat, we're going to see a lot of the tricks we're going to use for movement. Starting off with Big showing that he's actually the MVP of this team. If we do as a ground pound and then switch into Amy, suddenly she will instantly be at max speed, which is amazing. If we ground pound and switch into Cream, she'll get extra height before she can jump, which also helps line up jumps better. And right here, there's actually a dialogue box down there that we're going to skip, which is the only one in the stage we can skip, unless you get the step at the end. Now, right now as well, we're going to thunder shoot Amy to land faster. Just because that's the way the totem pole works. Yeah, you'll see that a lot of these formations, um, the teammates are actually interacting in each other with some way. So for the attacks, Cream uh, just kind of shoots their teammates at uh, <laughs> at enemies. Uh, it's the same with Big. Big uses the teammates to attack as well. But even even with uh, Amy, like the, the teammates play along with her homing attacks and with uh, with like rocket excels where they push her forwards. Yep. And right here, here again, we're using the extended jump. First. So we're essentially doing the tutorial without doing any part of the tutorial. The final end of the tutorial, it wants you to do a Team Blast, which is a mechanic the game has where you could just insta-kill basically anything. Um, opting not to, because why would we? Yep. <laughs> <laughs> You'll see it a couple times in a run, don't worry. Yeah, I think I'm also probably the only runner that uses it more than any, so we're going to see it quite a lot. <laughs> because Team Rose's Team Blast has a lot of that. So what we're doing here is we're going to charge a rocket excel and then right before we go off the platform we're going to press the B button again and Amy will get a huge burst in speed and momentum through the air with her hammer twirl and in doing that she also keep, retains her jump in the air so even after that huge burst of speed she will have a second jump which lets us traverse a lot of ground in the air quickly as weird as that sounds yeah, it's a move that basically every speed character in the game has access to. As long as you start the animation of that move uh, like uh, before you leave the ground, then the game will consider you on the ground for the remainder of the animation. So you can just jump out of it. Yep. She was quite a lot throughout the run, especially for Team Rose LTS, because it's one of the main ways we will be moving to platforms if they're slightly too far away and the game wants you to do something else to trigger that platform but we're going to skip a lot of those triggers Yeah, this, this one is not completely free of skips and tricks but we only do like the, the skips and tricks that are like the most movement oriented like that yeah. one or stuff that we specifically uh, just really like and <laughs> 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 Here we go! 
to explain what it stands for. It stands for limited attack selection. We started with no major glitches at first, and then we realized, wait, we still do major glitches in other teams. <laughs> um, how, how, how are we going to approach this? You know what? We we're arbitrarily picking skips. Uh, we're selecting them. Limited attack selection. There we go. Yep, that worked. Good enough. <laughs> I'm new enough to not know there was another name for it. <laughs> oh, we all we also have uh, no arbitrarily selected skips. <laughs> the much or no ass name. for short. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> now, right now, it's just mostly the same for the first few stages. Just using movement as best as we can. Right there, that's something we probably will do a lot. Is we're going to thunder shoot right before we go through a boost panel. Just so, yet again, we land a lot quicker than we should be able to. Because the totem gets messed up, and I believe you can act quicker as well if you do that that way. Uh, absolutely. If, if you go through it normally, then uh, the game just considers you in, okay, your flight is done state, so you, you can't really do all that much until you land. Um, However, if you do the thunder shoot right before you hit booster, then you uh, essentially reset your flight. It's another one of those little tricks that just makes it better. So you can like fly again afterwards if you want, or you can, you, at the very least, you start falling faster. Yep. A pretty big step we do in power plant when that comes up, but I'll attempt it. I don't think I'll get it. <laughs> that, was that, that, that is the hardest skip that, we, that is still in this run. Yeah, it's one of those steps as well where if you attempt it, you don't lose much time. If you don't exactly. get it. So there's no real much point in not attempting it. Whereas other steps in the run, you might lose quite a lot of time if you fail them. <laughs> I like how we just disregard the vast majority of this this turtle section just by taking the optimal route and jumping yeah. from one to the other. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that whole turtle route is just complete routing. The only real step at that part is jumping from one turtle to another, rather than taking the sprint it wants you to take. Exactly. But now we're coming up to the first Eggman fight, and every single Eggman fight in this game is interested in the way that we're always going to manipulate his AI to keep him on a set path, rather than trying to follow him, we're going to want him to follow us. And for Red Hulk, it's especially recommended because right behind you there's an invincibility box, which comes in really handy. Yeah, essentially what Iona is going to be doing is pulling uh, Eggman back far enough to a certain trigger where he will uh, trigger the sequence to landing on the beach, which ends up being faster than following him to the next beach that is in front of us. <laughs> and of course the aforementioned vulnerability box, so we can just go ham after that. Oh, that's not far enough. Nope, I messed that up. That's... Let me try that again. I think I messed up the speed so I didn't get far enough for the trigger to activate. I have been just off it. Yeah, and the reason Iona restarted rather than just pulling him back again is because the invincibility runs out otherwise. Yep. So right now, we're just going to fly up the cream, get the extra damage that we can, thanks to the invincibility, and then we're just going to mash B as big. And this is one of those fights where you just see it's like, oh hey, big really is the MVP. He yep. is almighty. Yep. <laughs> Basically everything good about this team is because of big. Every good thing. Yeah. All the movement is tied to big, all the damage is tied to big. Aside from like one fight, I think all the damage is going to be tied to big. Mm -hmm. Surprisingly, Kareem also is actually one of the best um, power character uh, or flight characters yeah. as well. <laughs> you might as well say power as well. <laughs> you might as well say power, but it's like. Even after all of her teammates are gone, she can send her chow cheese after people. That is. The most powerful damaging attack of that any of the flight characters have when yep. they ride around. It's very like slow, it, but it works. When it works, it slow. works really well. It's it's slow, but cheese goes in. Yep. That, 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 there's some muscle on that chow, I swear. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, this stage is probably the most notorious for killing runs for me. Because coming up at about 30-ish seconds, there's a pretty important clip, and if you miss it and fall, 
you lose about 30 seconds because there is no checkpoint right for it. So we're coming up to it and I'm going to let Sid explain what's happening. Yep, so what it's going to be doing is uh, building up a rocket excel which will give just enough speed to clip through the gate and then just before he uh, falls off of the, um, the the ledge there does the hammer in order to get the hammer to whirl. And so that's a pretty tight window in order to actually get the hammer to whirl off after which you can do the mid-air jump to get over the gap. Fortunately, uh, second try through uh, clipping through, as yep. that's fine as long as you don't die. <laughs> and now we're coming up to another important clip in the stage, pretty shortly after yep. that one. Yep, and this is the bridge skip. Fortunately, the bottom of that bridge does not have collision because you're never supposed to get over there while the bridge is in that state. So they didn't bother, uh, which means that if since we can get over there, we just clip through and skip lowering the bridge actually skips a lot more because you get over there you have to uh, open a bunch of doors in order to fight enemies behind it and not until those enemies are defeated does the bridge drop. Yep. That one saves quite a bit of time for Team Rose as well because mm. they want the game wants you to open doors by using these switches and they're both at opposite ends of the room and it takes quite a lot of time to get through them. At least I think that's how Team Rose does it. It's been a while since I've yep. Yep. That is how they do it. It's been a while since I've actually done it, so I wasn't fully sure. <laughs> so that's one of those steps, once you learn about it, you're basically never going to not do it. Exactly. <laughs> Until you play Chaotix and it's like, oh wait, I actually need to kill all the robots. <laughs> <laughs> you know, right here, we're going to do a team blast deliberately, because there's an enemy behind the door here, and he will be in within the team blast radius. So as soon as we go through that door, we're safe to just exit from the room. And Team Rose's Team Blast is probably the best Team Blast in the game. Because oh, it, it is. is yeah. <laughs> you <laughs> get by far the best Team Blast. You get a Stream Nook, you get a level up for every character, you get a shield, and you get invincibility. And it's the shortest one in the game. So even in the speedrun, it's also the best. <laughs> yeah. Like the, the only one that has a similar length is Team Dark's one, but the only effect that you get from it is stopping time, which yep. usually if you need, for instance, a door to open, uh, <laughs> is actually not beneficial for you. Fortunately, you can instantly cancel it, but that means you basically only get the insta-kill effect. Yep. <laughs> but no, the invincibility is something I will be abusing in quite a few occasions, just mm -hmm. because of how helpful that invincibility can be. Now, we've said wants to explain what's going to happen, but what's going to be attempted here. Yep, the, <laughs> this is the aforementioned skip that is probably the hardest skip in the run. Uh, Iona is going to be trying to get to these boosters and uh, doing a thunder shoot at the right time in order to maintain the ability to fly afterwards. Uh... And, yeah, it's, it's quite tricky to even set it up. Then once you get to the top of the elevator, um, you also have to do a little, like, very precise trick in order to... You know, the the, the, the move where, where Cream just kind of, like, boosts upwards very quick? If you do that at the right frame, right as the flight meter comes out, uh, runs out, you get, like, an extra boost of it. So that is what you need at the end, and you need quite a good one for it. So yeah. the, this is a skip that very few runners get consistently still. But uh, the, the very top of Team Rose usually does. Yeah, it's uh, a skip that saves about 10 seconds, I believe. Roughly. Uh, if you get it optimally, I think it can actually save like up to 15. Oh, wow, okay. And but right yeah. Now, yep. It's a very hard trick that I don't think I've ever actually got once. I'm not too hurt about it. But right there at the end there, I attempted to do what I think is called a slope jump. At the very tip of a slope, if you've got enough speed, if you jump off at the end, you will actually get very increased height, which means you can usually skip a few sections if need be. And right yep. there at the end, we're skipping, killing that enemy to bring the elevator up, as you saw. So we can just go straight up and break yeah. those boxes. Exactly. Uh, unfortunately, attempting the elevator skip costs no time because you need to wait for the elevator right anyway. Yep. So. <laughs> Very nice. But now we're coming up to either the easiest boss fight or the hardest boss fight, 
there's no in between. It all depends if the AI <laughs> manipulation works. So yeah, so essentially, what the enemy AI is based entirely on the moves that you do. So we're gonna break the boxes behind us, jump to manipulate them into jumping, and there it is. <laughs> Usually, sometimes I've got Knuckles will stay behind, and sometimes he'll jump off with the team, or sometimes he'll stay and try and fight. If Knuckles stays, it's probably the hardest boss fight you will ever encounter in this game. <laughs> because trying to fight Knuckles with Team Rose is not easy. Because <laughs> he is a speedy, speedy punchy, speedy punch oh, boy. Oh, for sure. <laughs> But right now, this would be a handy time if we could ever find a cutscene step, because right now we are right next to the door ring. Yep. <laughs> if we could get control in this cutscene, we we would basically skip the entire stage because this cutscene is right at the door. <laughs> you can hear it in the background. I think on the Xbox version, it's a lot louder. Like, I'm pretty yeah. sure it's louder than the cutscene itself. Basically, <laughs> it's just taunting you there. It's like, ha! You're not, you're not even gonna be here next in, right. in the next few seconds. So, casino stages are the bane of every speedrunner's existence for this game. So, right. Yeah. So, essentially, for Casino Park, it's pretty simple. We're going to go around the tables in a way that they're all basically automated. But when we get to Bingo Highway, that doesn't happen. <laughs> we can't do that, especially in LTS where the step is banned. So we're going to pray to every god in existence that it helps and we get a good Bingo Highway. Mm -hmm. There's a couple of things that are like different about the, 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 the pinball stages that will get into the Bingo Highway. Uh, for, for the time being, we've first got to focus on this skip. Uh, one of the aspects that I do have to explain right away is that when you're on a bingo t uh, pinball table, um, switching formations, uh, instead of go staying at the same location and that character coming to you, what instead happens is that uh, you go to wherever that character is. So what Iona is attempting to do, and this is the second hardest skip, <laughs> I'd say. Yeah, I would I um, agree with that. Yeah, it's um, everyone is going to be shooting the care the characters off of the table, kind of like at a on the ramp in order to shoot them near where the goal ring is, then land on the table to activate the pinball mechanics, and then switch to uh, either Amy or Big, whoever ends up getting closer. Uh, no, I'm. I don't think I'm really bother. <laughs> I'm just going <starting> to. <laughs> Too much was doing wrong, I don't believe in it right now. I'm just going to finish the stage normally and we'll be That's fine. Fair. Sometimes it's good to cut your losses. Yep. Yep. Oh, maybe it was still on the table apparently. That wasn't as expected. <laughs> there you go, there's, there's, there's pinball mechanics for you. <laughs> yep. <laughs> <sighs> and Instead, what Iona did was a little door clip. Uh, that works on a lot of doors depending on how thick the doors are. In Casino Park, it's not too bad. Just yeah. do a rock excel at the door, switch to flights, and then it clips through. Saves a fair bit of time if you need to go for that strat over opening the door itself. Because mm -hmm. yet again, we need to use those long switches. But yes, let me let me tell you about the thing about <laughs> pinball tables and bingo tables <laughs> that makes them so insufferable. Every time you hit an object, your center of gravity changes, so your, the controls slightly change. Every time you leave a table, and the same thing happens. So if you then have to land on another table, you might end up with entirely different controls than you had when you left. So you constantly have to adjust to what is going on. <laughs> and also, characters can die on pinball tables. Yep. Because... If, they, oh, I'll let you do it. Just oh yeah! <laughs> if, if one of your characters dies, then you have to wait the, the the normal three seconds for them to respawn naturally. If you try to force them back with moves that do that, like a flight or an, a, a roll or an attack with big, they will attempt to call it back, call that character back. But since they uh, are gone, nope, <laughs> they will never come back. <laughs> they will stay away forever <laughs> until you do a team blast. I think they Where even ignore the rule of coming back for a checkpoint, don't they? 
Correct. They even go back for uh, ignore that rule. Because you tried to force them back when when they were considered dead. And the, the, the game is not happy with that. Yep. Fortunately, if they both die, they just respawn instantly after you get off the multi table. So that is usually what we want to happen on those tables. Yep. <laughs> Right there, thankfully Cream actually got on this table, so at the end of it we can do a flight rather than bounce off the things. I don't actually know what they're called. It wants us to, so that we can kill those enemies very quickly and keep moving on. Green balls. <laughs> that's, 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 that's what I'm calling. <laughs> I was more talking about the platforms that bounce. Oh, the, the, the coin platforms. Coin blocks. Also, I think this is one of the only glass doors you can open by just pressing B, for some reason. Huh. Yeah, you can just open it by pressing B, and it just lets you skip the first part of that table, which is very helpful, because if you get stuck on that part of the table, you're stuck there for quite a long time as big. See, what I just do is I, I risk that part of the table and just <laughs> do the ground pound to get to the table faster and then cry. Yeah, see, I did do that, but then one day I just pressed B and it opened. I was like, oh, that's handy. <laughs> also, big can break uh, out of those tubes a little bit faster, fortunately. Yeah, we just hold left. Just hold left as soon as you're out of that first tube and you mm -hmm. will skip the rest of those yeah. automated tubes. Whether it works or not is kind of dependent on how your um, how your gravity is set. Big for some reason, um, pretty much always gets the, the right gravity there. It's I think it's because of his size that he hits like the edges just before the tube, just in the right way that he always gets the right gravity to break up. Like uh, I, I switched to Team Dark after it, and I was like, huh, Omega is not cooperating nearly as much as Big there. <laughs> Now, right now, we're all, I can also explain something else about how this game handles level ups. So, for every five enemies you kill, an enemy will drop a level up, but it will be for one of the two characters you're not controlling. So, right now, it will either be a big or a cream level up that drops, and it's a cream, that's what we want. In that situation, we never, ever want an enemy level up. So we use Amy to activate the Team Blast so that that never actually happens. And then we can use Cream or Big as a backup to kill these enemies extremely quickly. Actually got the op optimal one there. Cream is yep. definitely the best for this. We do want some more level ups on Big throughout this fight just so we can clear some of the other, uh, like the two final waves more consistently. Yeah, my luck but for... Peg level ups hasn't been good, so I'm pretty team blast here for this wave. I missed the team blast, that's fine, that's that's all good. I, I, I was gonna say, I tend to use cream on that one anyway. Yeah, no, you can use cream for that one fine, but if I needed to level up for Peg, I'm probably using the team blast just to be on the safe side. Gotcha. Yeah, the, the... What level ups do for Big is they give him a combo at the end of, uh, or a finisher at the end of his combo. Uh, the first one has like limited range, so you can get it if you're in the center enough, but it's it also gets to that point a little bit slower because it just kind of like expands to the outside. Yeah. So from level two onwards, it's basically not a problem. He can hit most things in the arena <laughs> if he's in the center. <laughs> Yeah, it's going to be the other thing on the other robot wave fight when we get to it is a lot of it's just going to be mashing B as big. Yep. <laughs> just the way the way things line up. Yeah, exactly. Right now, and there's some downtime if there's anything you'd like to read out. We've got an unstable cutscene. Uh, well, instead of donations, we can actually talk about, well, some sponsors. Uh, we would like to thank BSG for supporting this marathon, so if you want to know who BSG are, they are holding bi-monthly gatherings in the Netherlands, or at least they were holding it in the Netherlands, but current to all events. So they're holding it online. Uh, they have supported UKSG from the beginning by spreading the word and providing us with a channel to stream on. Uh, in past sessions before we uh, actually had uh, the deal with ESA. So, 
Mark your calendars because BSG Online 5 is uh, actually happening pretty soon from the 18th to the 20th of June. And the submissions for it are open right now. By the way, this uh, BSG Online will be streamed on the very channel uh, this uh, this uh, marathon is streamed, so you won't need to go extremely far to actually watch it. Oh yeah, BSG. <laughs> I, I'm entirely fine with us plucking that while, yep. while I'm here. It's, <laughs> I, as the resident Dutch boy. <laughs> anyway, I'm gonna uh, probably have to explain a little bit of what's going on right yeah. now because <laughs> I, I, I own has been, been switching formations like crazy. Uh, that actually has a purpose. Whenever you're on a rail, you can start. You can press B to start grinding to go faster. And um, whenever you first do that animation, you get a little bit of an initial burst. So what Aeon is doing is he's switching back and forth between Big and Amy, so that Amy does that little animation repeatedly faster than she normally would be able to, to get up to max speed faster. It is, a, it is, it only gets you up to max speed, doesn't get you past it, but considering there's a lot of turns, it, it can be beneficial to use it quite a lot to get back up to max speed after a turn. Yeah. It's a very helpful trick for rail sections, and it's going to be used quite a lot now, because nearly every stage after this starts with a crane rail. You're I, right. Yep. I think there's only <laughs> one that doesn't. Well, two. Hang Tassel and Mystic Mansion, I think, are the only two yeah. that don't. <laughs> You're right. <laughs> they are. I had not considered that. Yep. It took me a while to realize that as well. <laughs> I realized, <laughs> like, halfway through practicing one day, I was like, huh, there is a lot of green wheels after Rail Canyon. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it took me nearly eight years, apparently. Though, <laughs> <laughs> so granted, I barely touched Team Rose in those eight years. <laughs> Yeah, the rails aren't nearly as long as they are in Rail Canyon, though. Oh, yeah. So you won't be hearing the mashing as much. Don't worry about it. It's fine. It just it <laughs> makes it, it makes me feel like I am in a in a Super Smash Bros. Melee stream. I like it. <laughs> All we need is the loud Dreamland music. <laughs> Right there, walk it under that, uh, walk it except under that anyway and you will be fine. For this part, we're going to hope. Big was very slow jumping out, that's not fine. That just happens, That that's something you need to live with as a runner. It just, yeah. sometimes they're slow getting in, sometimes they get stuck and they never go in. And then after about 10 seconds, then the game decides to let you through. We do our best to get all of our teammates close to us so that they jump into the real uh, into the cannon with us. But yeah, sometimes they end up making you miss a cycle. Those cannons uh, fire like every 3.3 seconds uh, from the moment that the stage starts. So um, yeah, it's basically just cycles the stage. I think roughly 30 seconds is the fastest stage we can get for Team Rose. For Team Rose, 24. Oh, okay, that's. That's news to me. <laughs> mm -hmm. That's a lot faster than I think I've ever got. Mm -hmm. It requires a really optimal movement to get a 24, but it's possible. Yeah. And right here, we're going to ignore everything the game wanted us to do there. Jump off the rail and just get to the door ring. Mm -hmm. For every other team, there's a lot left of the stage there, but for Team Rose, it's short and sweet. Which is going to be the theme for quite a, the rest of this run. Mm hmm. Especially when we get to the castle stages. Those stages are short and very, very short. Yup. Yeah, Team Rose is essentially the easy mode of the game, yep. so they're like, just give them short stages. <laughs> they, they, they see you part of the stage, they get a nice a nice taste when I want to play the other play the other teams. And then everybody starts with Team Sonic anyway, because that's, <laughs> that's it's Team yeah. Sonic. <laughs> anyway, Sid can take explaining the manipulation of this fight away while I try not to die. Mm -hmm. Yep, so pretty similar to the Yakog fight, um, we are just going to be staying on this, this initial platform and calling the boss back to us. Uh, of course, you can also see the Yakog model on top, but this time he has two extra phases. Big is really powerful, as we have established. <laughs> so so uh, what, what we do is we just call him back, use Big, and uh, do a bit of extra damage with this Team Blast. I'll get into how he got that team last a little bit later, but uh, 
for, for, for starters, that's already the second phase. And then again, just gonna call it back. The actual egg hog part of the boss only has very little health in this case. You can usually kill it in one hit. Usually. Yeah, in this case, in this case, the robots were kind of in the way and yeah. <laughs> took like the targeting. So um, I did, the first hit was only like um, as, as part of the damage that actually made it to Eghawk, but then a, a quick second hit is no problem. Yeah, usually doing the second hit anyways, I would back up rather than yeah. attempting the one hit, then realizing you didn't kill them, and then having yeah. to try and line it all up again. And just to explain how we got the team blast so fast, uh, if you press, uh, if you're in flight formation and you press the thunder shoot button, the uh, attack button, as well as one of the formation buttons on the same frame, Queen will glitch out and just rapidly do attacks. And every attack she does, the, the meter goes up a bit. So you need like just over three of those in order to completely fill up your team blast meter. Yep, it's something we also do well, I do at least quite a lot during the run. Is I do back up in some cases as well. If for some stages you need the team blast to activate. Is I do back up if let's say you die at some point during the stage, and your team blast meter needs to reset. If you then need the team blast, you can easily just do that whenever you can and not lose that much time over refilling it by mashing buttons. Oh. Yeah, I think Aona does it in the Lost Jungle as well, and uh, at the start of Robot Storm, the, the boss fight of the castle section. Yep. Lost Jungle, I think, I'm probably the only runner that does it in, but <laughs> it works, it works. Mm -hmm. That's the good thing about speedrunning, is most people tend to have backup strategies that aren't similar to most people. Exactly. Like, oh yeah, you can, you can, you can watch any runner and just see like little things they have that uh, you don't, will not see in anyone or any other run, just little mannerisms or a little way of doing the movement. Yep. And right there that was another failed attempt at doing the rocket excel off the ledge. That was just a rocket excel off the ledge rather than getting the hammer twirl. That was a very slow one, I don't know if we're going to make it here. Okay, we're fine. There's been a lot of times where I've barely just missed that green reel as well. It's a very terrifying jump. <laughs> yeah, the hitbox of that rail uh, is actually smaller than you would think looking at the rail. Yep. So you need to make sure you're on the right part of it. Thankfully we got it second try, so not much time wasted. But mm -hmm. I think in terms of very scary things, we're basically out of the water for now. Right now we're just going to go through the stages as much as we can, as fast as we can, as normally as we can. Until we get to about Ed Fleet, and then everything's a heart attack moment because of the way Ed Fleet is designed. Ed Fleet's fine. Right here, I'm skipping the trigger for so seeing that frog because the black frogs take away terrain or destroy it. That's no camera trigger. That was terrifying. Oh, well, okay. <laughs> I don't think I've ever seen that damage trigger before. He started flying pretty early, so... I did not know that was there either. <laughs> this is another one of those cases where every runner has their own, uh, their own thing. Because uh, there's another strat there where you can just kind of take the ramp rather yeah. than flying up there from the platform. And uh, it's runner's preference for the most part, which, which one you're more, more comfortable with. These camera triggers are really concerning me. <laughs> <laughs> I've never seen most of these. Yeah. But that's that's Marathon standard at this point. Things you've never seen before? Oh, here it is in a Marathon. <laughs> <laughs> and right here, we're going to jump off this loop in a way so that we skip the whole part instead of being stuck on the automated path. And right here, here's what the bad frogs actually do. They will destroy these fruit and destroy the robots for you. And the fruit will also hurt you, so we try our best to avoid it. And right here is where I'm going to do another Team Blast glitch. Just to get rid of the robots in the next room. Just because I find it safer than swinging at them and praying for the best. Unfortunately, Team Rose has a very fast animation. 
Yep. Uh, I missed the homing attack. That's right. So I will say, even though that um, Team Rose gets speed shoes from from that um, Team Blast, you usually wouldn't actually say that they do. Yeah. And that's because of the way speed shoes work in this game. They do get you up to your max speed faster with with on the ground, but that's about all they do on the ground. In the air, they actually significantly boost your your maximum speed that you can like essentially fall and fly at and it's like oh speed shoes mostly work in the air okay yeah i think that's just the way heroes physics are in the it's yep. just a weird bundle of joy yep anyway everyone say bye team chaotics bye team chaotix <laughs> Yeah, for that fight, all we're doing is two hammer throws at most, and it's over. Sometimes yep. Vector will be a good boy and bounce out after the first one, sometimes he won't. It's just the way it is. <laughs> but the second one will always make sure he flies out anyway. Exactly. It kind of depends how fast you get your first one up. Yeah. But they'll all get caught in it anyway and then all fall off. And it's a lot mm. easier than the Team Sonic manipulation. <laughs> <laughs> Right now, with the Hand Castle, one of the shorter stages by far, because oh, yeah. you're basically nearly always when you get sub one minute or very low minute. The only real major problem is the door clip at the start. Like, as you saw in Casino Park, we're going to rocket and sail towards a door, switch the cream right before we touch it, and hopefully have enough speed transferred over to clip through. There we go. Third time's a charm. I uh, don't think that's enough height. Nope, that's not enough height. That's fine. Right there, we can do another kind of slope jump with a rotating cell, switch into cream. And then hope you've got enough height after the jump to make it right up to where that ground rail was. But we didn't get it, so it's fine. And right here, yet again, we're jumping off the side of the stage and stepping most of it. <laughs> That's that's Hank Castle. It's yep. like even though it's just relatively small jumps, you you just skip so much of it, all of it combined. <laughs> but now we get the best jump in the entire game. We're going to blindly yeah. throw ourselves over to this wall. But why would you do that, Leah? You ask. Well, oh, that's just the gold range right there. <laughs> the gold, <laughs> the gold range just hanging out. And we call it, even though the gravity isn't switched, we can still touch it from the bottom and finish the stage. See, that's the thing, you don't actually need to switch gravity, there's just a platform that goes up there. Yep. Goes to show you how uh, <laughs> <laughs> how long it's been since anyone has done this test <laughs> overly. <laughs> but now Mystic Mansion is another stage where nothing really happens. Uh, the biggest thing that happens is I'll say walls are a suggestion, and I'll leave it at that. Mm -hmm. And you get stuck on everything because there's boxes everywhere and big hit boxes oh, yeah. are huge. So it's hard to go fast just from a movement st standard alone, even though there's not really any si significant skips. Oh, missed the platform. That's fine. We're going to actually skip this platform as well, just by using the extended jump. Right here, I'm going to try and line up a rocket excel so we actually touch that switch from quite a distance away, funnily enough. Oh, touch the hammer, that's fine. And right here, we're just gonna go through the wall. For some reason, on the GameCube version only, I think, that wall I just think... doesn't exist. I think on the original Xbox version as well, the 360's hardware is too powerful, so the wall actually does its wall job and wall. <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, it, it technically exists, but you, even your normal running speed is fast enough to clip through it. <laughs> yeah, but even if you don't play this game on GameCube anyway, it, the wall jump doesn't actually save that much time. Because nah. even that pole you saw, you don't need it. You can actually just jump down that hole and you'll land on a platform anyway and be fine. Yeah, that was Mystic Mansion. That was 
relatively short stage, nothing really happens. The bobsled is the most probably involved part of the stage and it's not even that involved. Now we get another boss fight with uh, a bunch of robot enemy <laughs> waves. <laughs> Gonna start off with some team blast glitches to hopefully get um, up to that real fast. With most teams, it's not actually worth to do that. But um, with Team Rose, since you get one level up for each of your formations, it is extremely worth it to do yep. that. Because <laughs> after we do that, you just get to spam B as big for the rest of the fight. Basically. There's like some real life that happens to make sure we're hitting the enemies, but other than that, it's we're gonna stand in the middle here, try to be four enemies around us, we're just gonna spam B, swing the rod, kill them all, move forward a bit by pressing B, and do the exact same thing here. Hopefully, kill them all, yep. And for that switch, I press B into it so that when I land, human enemy are already on my shoulders rather than having to realign everything. And this is the only part of the fight that's different. If you look up to make sure we can see the robots, in a second we see them we team blast, get rid of this wave instantly. That's interesting, you look at the... you, you actually move the camera up, I just look at the shadows. Yeah, so... Both, both work. Yeah, that's another thing where people just do different things depending <laughs> on who's running. And right now, we're probably the best voice line in the entire game, in my personal opinion. <laughs> she says with such determination, it's great. Oh, she she is hella into it. <laughs> Robot freaks are so disgusting. But now coming up, this is we're going to have two instances of downtime in this stage. So if there's anything to read, now's a good time. Oh, we have a couple of things. So first, we have a $30 donation, anonymous donation to be precise, saying thank you for a weekend of great runs. And this actually goes to, oh, let me check, this goes to uh, Mirror's Edge uh, Category Bid War, which is between inbound and 100%. These $30 are going towards the 100% category, and right now, 100% is leading with $110.43 to inbounds at $10. So if you want to see uh, the inbounds category being run, don't hesitate to donate as well for this uh, wonderful uh, charity that is Crisis. Thank you very much. Right, so this is Eggfleet, and uh, for most of it, it's actually going to be movements that doesn't really flow all that well because of the way the stage is designed. <laughs> so this is actually a surprisingly tough stage to go fast in just by movement alone. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, a lot of it, the stage wants you to move vertically a lot, but we don't really want to do that. <laughs> Safe from. Don't have much of a choice. Yep. <laughs> oh, that was the wrong formation. That's that's fine. Everything's fine as long as you get to the ship. Yep. And right there, I deliberately avoid that boost panel because it has caused me way too much heartache throughout my life. Because for some reason, sometimes the boost panel decides not to exist, which is mm -hmm. very fun. Also, speaking of downtime, here's a minute auto scroller. So oh, if get, yeah. If you get anything else you want to read, there's a, well, actually the last chance you'll get in the run. Mm -hmm. I, I really love Cream's voice lines during <laughs> this particular auto scroller. Yeah, it's she's great. just, she's so understanding of Eggman. <laughs> <laughs> Just maybe he just does have a lot of time on his hands, you know? Yeah. Maybe he just does. <laughs> it, it, it's, it's this stage and, and Final Fortress as well, where it's just like, it, it, when, when she sees these massive, this massive battleship he has with loads of cannons, all she says is like, maybe he doesn't like his neighbors much. 
And now that old scroller, for Team Rose specifically, is just an auto scroller. For every other team, you need to decide what angle you're at, or you will get shot at. For Team Rose, you can take your hands off your controller and you will be fine. That's a hydration break. <laughs> it's a very much needed one. <laughs> right here, we're going to that. That's definitely not enough height. We I mean, hopefully land on this platform instead. That's fine. Usually you can just jump straight up to this platform, but back up is fine. And that is it. Oh, well, get the orchid too. Thank you. At the end there, you never want to home in attack. Because the cannons on the side are also a target. So if you try and home and attack the goal ring, chances are you'll home and attack the cannon instead and fall off the stage. Yeah, this game works with targeting priority, and the priority is always on the thing you want it not to be. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, now we're coming up to the last action stage in the game. Where there's quite a few tricky parts of movement, but other than that, it's mostly straightforward. So right now we're going to attempt to keep on this top platform as much as possible. We're going to use Amy's extended jump to the best of our advantage. And then right now we're going to use another hammer throw in the air. Extend the jump a little bit just to make sure we land on that platform. And right now these platforms tend to fall. But it's not really an issue. Do another hammer twirl to get around it. And right here, the game wants you to kill that enemy, but, you know, you just you just fly over to the green wheel. You'll be fine. This is a pacifist run. <laughs> <laughs> we only kill robots when absolutely necessary. Right there, you can skip that hole as well, but I'm not very fond of doing that. <laughs> it's, it's, it's a hard jump. I've yeah. lost runs to it. <laughs> I've lost quite a fair few. Right here, we're actually deliberately going to take the lower path. For once, in a Sonic game, I know it's heresy. But, it's actually a lot quicker. And then right there, we switch the cream right before we hit the sprites, so that we can fly right the way up, instead of dealing with the enemy that's below us. And right here, we're hopefully going to thundershot this enemy, because dealing with it, it's a pain, there we go. And then we're going to hope to laser ball as it in the way, thank god. And now we're going to go that lines up with this brain wheel properly. Because I have lost runs where he just is not lined up. And for some reason, Heroes does that a lot. That is the downside of Rose not having a selfish switch there like the other teams, but yeah. instead an, an air booster, and you can actually get this aligned with the rail. <laughs> yeah, I don't know why, because the ship itself still blows up. Yeah. Like, the ship still blows up, the self destruct yeah, switch I'm isn't not, there. I'm not sure why they didn't go for a self destruct switch with Rose. Yeah. <laughs> Sub to a final fortress, so that was pretty decent. But now, coming up to the last boss of the game, and the time is going to be when the last hit is dealt. So if anyone's ready on time, that would be a good time. As long as I don't mess anything up, we should be good. Yeah. <laughs> well, let's said explain what's going to happen here. Exactly. So what we're going to be doing is we're going to be making use of level uh, level two cream. Because again, at level one, um, it the thunder shoot starts bouncing to different targets. At level two, it starts doing damage. Fortunately, there is two cream uh, pickups here in the stage, right before uh, we land on that side platform and then cream's gonna completely destroy dr eggman what the game wants you to do is it wants you to follow dr eggman to uh, the arena and um, but instead uh, we're just keeping him on this platform specifically for the purpose of him not using his shield he's still in his attacking phase right here so he will just be screaming take this take this and, and that uh, is time that was <laughs> that's the first time I got that pretty well. Um, nice. Sorry, I had to put into your explanation, Sid. No, man, I, I was I was very much expecting to at any point be interrupted <laughs> with the time because this this fight can go like very fast. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that was that was pretty clean. 
Alright. GG. 48 minutes and 30 seconds. Yep, that makes sense with how... I'll say bad the early game went. <laughs> <laughs> but no, that was a solid enough run for a marathon, I feel. That was a solid showcase, absolutely. Mm. Definitely a solid showcase. It's alright. Thank you very much for showing Sonic Heroes. Thank you for having so, me. No problem. And next run is going to be Yakuza 3 Remastered, run by Rebel Dragon 95 We are going to go uh, through a short intermission and we will be back in about 10 minutes for the next run.